Yeah. How's it going guys? I'm Josh Katz and today we're going to photograph one of my favorite things to shoot in the entire world, art museums. Art museums are awesome to shoot because you've got beautifully designed buildings, inspirational artwork, eclectic people, and of course perfectly designed lighting. Now while they're one of the most photographed places in the entire world, they're also some of the worst photographed. I've seen too many soulless selfies with priceless art taken, so today I'm going to be putting an end to that by giving you a bunch of different tips and tricks on taking unique photos. And spoiler alert, it's not always about photographing the art. And also, we're at the Met. Before we jump into photo styles, I want to talk about pre-planning because museums tend to have very stringent photography policies that if you're not careful can mess you up. If you are careful, we can totally work around them. So first of all, I definitely recommend checking museums' websites out to see what their policies actually are. Typically they're very standard and they say no flashes, no tripods, no backpacks, and oftentimes no video. Additionally, some private collections aren't allowed to be photographed and they'll definitely let you know before you enter into those rooms but make sure that the entire museum isn't one big no photo private collection. Additionally, the photos you shoot will typically be non-commercial use only, meaning you can't shoot them for anything for profit, but if you're shooting them just for fun, as we are in this video, you are A-OK. -okay. Next off, I wanna talk about packing. So you can't bring backpacks in most museums, however, small tote bags can get you pretty far, and a man purse is highly encouraged. So if they don't allow any bags, you can stuff extra batteries, filters, lens cleaners, and memory cards into your pockets or a tote bag. Uh, consider wearing a jacket with lots of pockets. That can be a helpful one. Now, do be prepared just to minimize your gear. I like to only bring one or two lenses in, ideally something very fast, like an f2.8 lens. I brought my 1635 2.8 and a 50 millimeter lens. For extra padding, I recommend wrapping your lenses in a t-shirt. Also, you probably can't bring a tripod. However, mini tripods are still wishy-washy. I had a lot of luck shooting with a mini tripod in the Met, so definitely bring this, and worst case scenario, someone tells you to put it away. And last pre-planning tip, you might want to optimize for busyness. If you go on a rainy Saturday, the place is going to be packed and it's going to be difficult to photograph. If you go on a quieter weekday early in the morning, you're going to have a little bit more luck. So you can definitely strategize around this if you have the luxury of time. You can look on Google. It'll give you popular times for each museum to give you an idea of the best times to go. Anyway, let's get to the shooting. First off, let's talk about street photography. Street photos aren't just reserved for the street. You can take unsuspected photos of people anywhere, even in museums or indoors. There's a phenomenally diverse group of people at museums and everyone is trying to open up their minds and absorb art or at least pretending to for their partner's sake. So rather than photographing the art directly, use it as a backdrop to photograph the people. It is a lot of fun. And also it's very easy to get away with shooting people because no one suspects that you're photographing them. Everyone is running around wielding a camera so it's a really great place to practice street photography in a low stakes environment. If you want your street photos to have a little bit more impact, consider turning them into a series. So one of the first street photo series I did in a museum was people using their cell phones in front of really priceless pieces of art. That was a ton of fun a few years back. You can also just catch people looking funny, engaging with the art, keep an eye out for eccentric elderly folks, painters and drawers recreating the art, young kids who are always incredibly expressive and invigorated and eager to touch the art. There are so many funny dynamics in museums that are great for photographing. Look for people who are sleeping, look for people dressed similarly to a certain painting and try and photograph them with it all kinds of potential. Number two, portraits. If candid street photos aren't your style, consider bringing a model to have them engage with the environment. So all of the strategies I just mentioned, like having your subject match the art, work perfectly well with the model too, and you can actually pre-plan to get this done. A lot of museums will have particular galleries uploaded online, or you can use Instagram hashtags to see what pieces of art you might wanna have your model emulate. I had my model Sarah wear a red hat because I knew there were a lot of red circles in the Joan Moreau exhibit and that would work perfectly for some cool shots. Think of your model as an extension of the museum. So how can they engage with the art? How can they engage with the architecture? And how can they engage with other guests? There's so much potential here and museums are just a playground of beauty. So 
keep an eye out and don't be afraid to not look at art and instead just focus purely on your photography. It's, it's a ton of fun doing that. This is one of my favorite pieces I made of Sarah and in this I used the reflection of the glass casing of one piece to capture Sarah and another piece I really liked. Also full disclosure, the photos I shot of Sarah in today's video are actually taken in the MoMA while the rest of the photos are in the Met. All right, back to number three, let's talk about portraits of strangers. Some would call this street photography, other purists would say this is absolutely not because it's posed. Either way, this is a very fun thing to do in a museum. So if you don't have a model, don't be afraid to ask strangers to pose for your shots. There is no better place in the world to do this since you're surrounded by people who love art or are pretending to love art for their significant others. All is good either way. Everyone's also typically wearing their coolest, most photogenic clothes too. It's just a great environment for this. And if you do take any of these portraits, always offer to send them to your subjects. It's just a cool thing to do. If you're not sure how to go about doing this, consider striking up a conversation with your subject about the art before asking them, or just say, hey, you look really awesome right now. Can I take your photo? A compliment and the photo request are a really great pairing that works most of the time. At this point, some of you guys might be thinking, Josh, I hate photographing people. I just wanna take a nice clean photo of some art so I can put it up on my Instagram nicely framed up and make people think I'm cultured. And to that I say, let's talk about number four, photographing the art. So a couple tips for you here. If you're photographing anything within glass casing, you're gonna be dealing with reflection. And the best way to combat this is with the polarizer filter. When you spin around a polarizer filter, you can actually make the huge difference between catching all of the reflections or none of it, which is the difference between a clean shot and a busy shot. Now, sometimes you want that perfectly clean photo with zero reflections. Other times, you might wanna lean into that reflection and actually catch reflections of other pieces or different people or really anything else going on in the museum. There's a lot of potential to actually have different pieces work together using this reflection. And I personally love doing that, having two pieces engaged together, but polarizer filters will give you a lot of options either way. Additionally, don't feel obligated to shoot one piece properly, having it nicely framed up so you can see all of its edges. Consider getting super close up for some macro work, focusing in on just one element of a piece, or take a big step back and incorporate multiple pieces into one photo, and you get way more interesting shots this way. For those of you that hate photographing people and photographing art, maybe you shouldn't be in an art museum, or maybe you should be shooting number five, interior architecture. Museums are so beautifully designed, even down to the bathrooms oftentimes, just so, so beautiful. If you wanna take great interior museum shots, you're gonna wanna think about lighting. A lot of museums are designed to optimize on natural light, so they look completely different as the light changes throughout the day. Common rule of thumb in photography is that golden hour is the best time to shoot. Fortunately, museums are the one place where that's quite an exception. Oftentimes you might have atriums, which look really great during midday, and if you just stay around in one room and watch that lighting change, you'll see it has completely different looks at different times of day. Since these naturally lit rooms can look completely different based on what time of day it is, consider doing two or three different laps around the museum just so you get a different perspective each time you come. When you find a spot with interesting natural light, take note of where the lighting is going and where it's been. So this gives you an idea of maybe it'll look really, really great in an hour once it aligns with a particular spot, or maybe you should have come two hours ago. All these things are good for future visits or just planning around your current visit. Meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, some rooms are completely devoid of natural lighting, which on one hand is awesome because you have extreme lighting consistency to work with, on the other hand, can be a little difficult because they're often dimly lit. Now with the dimly lit room comes the use of the tripod. Tripods open up a lot of doors in interior architecture photos. The reason being, you can use slower shutter speed. When you're shooting a handheld photo, your shutter speed as a basic rule of thumb should be at least as fast as your focal length of your lens. So if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, you should be shooting at at least 1 50th of a second or faster. Now when you're in these low light situations, to let in more light, it's really awesome to get to use slower shutter speeds. This will give you more flexibility to have a higher aperture number, which is great for having a larger depth of field, having more of the room in focus, and it's great for lowering your ISO, keeping the shot not too noisy. Another really fun thing you can do with slow shutter speeds is actually have motion blur of your shot. As an experiment, try bringing your shutter speed to somewhere between a half a second and one second. Now what you'll see happens is 
Everything that is stationary in the photo stays nice and sharp. Well, everything that's moving, all the people around you start to blur out and you get these nice movement trails from them. So this not only looks nice and cool, very abstract, it also brings more attention to the art and the room. You'll find that if you use a shutter speed even slower, like say five or 10 seconds, anyone that's moving in the shot will completely vanish from the photo, which brings you a nice empty feel to a room that might otherwise be very busy. Now bear in mind anyone that's staying still will stay frozen or just be slightly blurred from their movements, but anyone moving, so if it's people walking past the art, will be out of the shot. Now sometimes you might have too much light for very slow shutter speeds, and the trick to this is using a neutral density filter, which actually darkens your lens. If you wanna learn more about neutral density filters, I have a whole video on them, link in the corner right here, but just so you know, I was using a 10 stop neutral density filter in these shots, and I really liked the look I was getting. A Couple other architecture tips, don't forget to look up. There are often beautiful ceilings as well as elevators, escalators, pretty much everything in museums is gorgeous. It also really helps to have a wide angle lens because you can capture more of the scene. I really enjoyed using my 1635 for these interior shots. Next off, number six, exterior photographs. Museums are typically just as beautiful on the outside as they are on the inside, so don't rush in to get to the art. Enjoy seeing what the scene is like outside the museum. The Met has these very iconic steps, so you have a lot of people hanging out on them, taking photos on them, and just being general, silly looking tourists on them. So lots of really great street photography potential there. Additionally, you can take just beautiful photos of the building itself, and there are no gear requirements when you're outside. So bring your full scale tripod, bring any sort of gear you might wanna use, and if you wanna shoot those high gear photos and then get rid of some stuff, you can always check your bag and bring in just the minimal gear you wanna do when you shoot the actual museum. That's what I was doing for this day. I checked my big old backpack and brought just my tote bag. And that's a wrap. Hope you guys learned some great tips for shooting museums today. If you go out and shoot your own photos, I'd love to see them. This is the reason that I teach. So definitely post them up on Instagram using the hashtag joshcatsphotos and tag me at joshcats so I can see your work. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more videos and check out my online course for a comprehensive masterclass in photography. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you eventually. I'm gonna go stare at art for the rest of my life.